Hey, hi <laughs> you guys. <laughs> I uh, uh, we, I haven't been here for a while. It's Thursday, and what a week it's been. Been really crazy. My friend uh, Sadhu Pram uh, has been in, and uh, we did uh, um, Tuesday night. We had a um, a um, kirtan, and it was amazing. And with a group of people and just been really busy the last couple of days so I, I haven't had a chance to do this so I missed Tuesday and Wednesday read um, but I'm back and I'm back with um, the power of now and uh, thought I would read uh, a bit today uh, we're setting up for another kirtan do you I'm not sure if you know what kirtan is but uh, kirtan is uh, like devotional singing and uh, call and response devotional singing and uh, you know, it's it's so amazing how uplifting uh, devotional singing can be, and and uh, so my friend has been here and just singing up a storm. Um, he's actually in the back right now, uh, um, getting the uh, uh, kind of tuning his guitar and, and doing a sound check uh, for tonight's uh, evening. <coughs> so. I was out at an event last night, uh, Alice Hong, uh, who's a, a, a facilitator, practitioner, healer, um, leader in our community here in Calgary, had an evening of, um, a very intense evening, of, uh, allowing, <clears throat> you know, the mystical, magical, uh, wild feminine to come up in the presence of a, a, a group of men who were standing for that and, and uh, it was uh, we got to receive uh, some pain and, and uh, um, really was beautiful we, you know the, the women had an opportunity to really share uh, their life journey and and, uh, um, and and we were there to just witness and, and uh, um, as the you know the masculine uh, healing energy and it was beautiful beautiful evening and, and uh, <clears throat> um, why am I telling you that oh I guess just the week that we've had oh I know because people uh, at, there was like 35 or 40 people there last night and and, and I was really surprised that that uh, people said to me David I've been listening to you read um, Eckhart Tolle -y. and uh, I'm, I'm always shocked a bit shocked with you know when and I hear that uh, one lady was so cool. She said, I'm often at work when you come on. And she said, I put the headphones on and listen to you read. I think that's so beautiful. Thank you. You know, I just, I'm honored. Um, so we're on page 123. And, uh, um, and I think we're in chapter six. Are we in chapter six? 123. We're well into this chapter. Um, yeah, it is. The chapter is called The Inner Body, and we're on uh, um, 123. And the subtitle on this chapter is uh, Your Link with the Unmanifested. And uh, the question, and as you know, if you've been following uh, the way that he put this book together, uh, there's often questions from his students. And, uh, and and he's uh, making an effort to answer them. He'd been on the road quite a while, has had had in his enlightening enlightenment, you know, and, and uh, was carrying a message and and was encouraged to write this book. And I think it was published in '99. <coughs> I thought it was '94, but I think it says in the front that it was published in '99. And uh, a lot of it came out of the interactions with with students. So, what is the relationship between presence? and the inner body. His answer was, presence is pure consciousness. Consciousness that has been reclaimed from the mind, from the world of form. The inner body is your link to the unmanifested, and in its deepest aspect is the unmanifested. The source from which consciousness... The inner body is your link with the unmanifested and in its deepest aspect is the unmanifested. Of course, the source from which consciousness emits. 
as light emits from the sun. Awareness of the inner body is consciousness remembering its origin and returning to the source. Nice. Is the unmanifested the same as being? <coughs> yes, he said. The word unmanifested attempts by ways of negation to express that which cannot be spoken, thought, or imagined. It points to what is by saying what is not. Being, on the other hand, is a positive term. Pl please don't get attached to either of these words or start believing in them. There are, they are no more than signposts. So, unmanifest or being, it's not a word to get attached to. Next question. You said that presence is consciousness that has been reclaimed from the mind. Who does the reclaiming? Hey, JR. Hope you're coming tonight. Uh, uh, James is here uh, tuning up the guitar in the back. You can probably hear him. Uh, <clears throat> who does the unclaiming? You do, he says. But since in your... but since in your essence you are consciousness we might as well say that it is an awakening of consciousness from the dream of form this does not mean that your own form will instantly vanish in an explosion of light you can continue in your present form yet be aware of the formless and deathless deep deathless deep within you wow i must admit is the question i must admit that this is a way beyond my comprehension. And yet, on some deeper level, I seem to know what you're talking about. It's more like a feeling than anything else. Am I deceiving myself? No, he said, you are not. Feeling will get you closer to the truth of who you are uh, than thinking. I cannot tell you anything uh, that, anything that deep within you, the deep within you don't already know. When you have reached a certain stage of interconnectedness, you recognize the truth when you hear it. If you haven't reached the stage yet, the practice of the practice of body awareness will bring you into deeper into deepening will bring about the deepening that is necessary. Did you get that? I'm gonna try that last line again. When you have reached a certain stage of interconnectedness, you recognize the truth when you hear it. If you haven't reached that stage yet, the practice of body awareness will bring about your deepening that is necessary. Okay, I got that. <coughs> Slowing down the aging process. In the meantime, awareness of inner body has often has other benefits in the physical realm. One of them is a significant slowing down of the aging of the physical body. Imagine. Who would have thought? <laughs> Whereas the outer body normally appears to grow old and wither fairly quickly, the inner body does not change uh, with time, except that you may feel it more deeply and become it more fully. If you're 20 years old now, the energy field of uh, your inner body will feel just the same when you're 80. It will be just as vibrantly alive. As soon as your habitual state changes from being one being out of the body hmm as soon as your habitual state changes from being out of the body and trapped in your mind to being in the body and present in the now your physical body will feel lighter clearer more alive nice as there is uh, more consciousness in the body its molecular structure actually becomes less dense more consciousness means a lessening of the illusion of uh, mat materiality. materiality. Hmm. The illusion of materiality. I'm not sure about that word. Hi, Kim. Thanks for dropping in. When you become identified more with the timeless inner body than with the outer body, uh, when presence becomes your normal mode of, conscious, mode of consciousness and 
past and future no longer dominate your attention, you do not accumulate time anymore in your psyche and in the cells of your body. The accumulation of time as the psychological burden of past and future greatly impairs the cell's capacity for self-renewal. So, if you inhabit the inner body, the outer body will grow old at a much slower rate. And even when it does, your timeless essence will shine through the outer form and you will not give the appearance of an old person. Is there any scientific evidence of this? Try it out. Try it out and you will be the evidence. That was his answer. Try it out and you will be the evidence. Strengthening the immune system. Another benefit of this practice in the physical realm is a great strengthening of the immune system, which occurs when you inhabit the body. The more consciousness you bring into the body, the stronger the immune system becomes. It is as if every cell awakens and rejoices. The body loves your attention. It is also a, a potent form of self-healing. Most illnesses creep in when uh, you are not present in the body. If the master is not present in the body, all kinds of shady characters will take up residence there. Imagine, consider, breathe, baby. Yeah. All kinds of shady characters will take up residence there. When you inhabit your body, it will be hard for unwanted guests to enter. It is not only your physical immune system that becomes strengthened, your psychic immune system is greatly enhanced as well. The latter protects you from the negative mental emotional force field of others, uh, which are highly contagious. Inhabiting the body protects you not by putting up a, a shield, but by raising the frequency, frequency vibration of your total energy field, so that everything that vibrates at a lower frequency, such as fear, anger, depression, and so on, now exists in what is virtually a different order of reality. Uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't enter your field of consciousness anymore, and or if it does, you don't need to uh, offer any resistance to it because it passes right through you. Uh, please don't just accept or reject what I am saying. Put it to the test it to the test. There is a simple but powerful self-healing meditation uh, that you can do whenever you feel the need to boost your immune system. It is practic practically effective if used when you feel the first symptoms of an illness, but it also works with uh, illnesses that are already entrenched uh, if you use it at frequent intervals and with an intense focus. It will be, it will also counteract any a disruption in your energy field by some form of negativity. However, it is not a substance for the moment-to-moment -moment practice. It's not a substitute for the moment-to-moment -moment practice of being in the body. Otherwise, uh, it, its effect will only be temporary. Here it is. Here it is. When you are on occupied for a few minutes, and especially last thing at night when you're falling asleep and the first thing in the morning when you're getting up, flood your body with consciousness. Close your eyes. Lie flat on your back. Uh, close. Choose different parts of your body to focus your attention on. Uh, briefly, at first, hands, feet, arms, legs, abdomen, chest, and so on. Feel. I gotta stop for a second. <laughs> I got. I kind of lost the thread for a minute. I gotta back up. I'm actually gonna back up the whole paragraph. <clears throat> Here it is. When you are unoccupied for a few minutes, and especially last thing at night before falling asleep, the first thing and the first thing in the morning before getting up. Flood your body with consciousness. Close your eyes, lay flat on your back. Uh, choose different parts of your body to focus your attention on briefly. 
at first the hands, feet, arms, legs, abdomen, chest, head, and so on. Feel the life energy inside those parts as intensely as you can. Stay with each part for 15 seconds or so. Then let your attention run through the body like a wave a few times from head to toe and back again. This need only take a minute or so. After that, feel the entire body in its totality as a single field of energy. Hold the feeling for a few minutes. Be intensely present during this time. Be intensely present during that time. Present in every cell of your body. Uh, don't be concerned if the mind occasionally succeeds in drawing your attention out of the body and you lose yourself in some thought. As soon as you, as soon as you notice that this has happened, just return your attention to the inner body. Yes. Yes, I got about a page and a half left in this chapter. We're going to power through. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I kind of want to go sing with uh, with uh, James, but I feel I feel a bit of a commitment to do get this reading in, you know, for uh, people who have been listening, and I, I want to share it with you. So here we go. Uh, the next little subtitle on page 125, Let the Breath Take You Into the Body. At times... When your mind has, at times when my mind has been very active, it has acquired such momentum that I find it impossible to take my attention away from it and, and feel the inner body. This happens particularly when I, when I get into a worry or anxiety pattern. Uh, do you have any suggestions? If at any time you are finding it hard to get in touch with the inner body, it's usually easier to focus on your breathing first. Conscious breathing, which is a powerful meditation in its own right, will gradually put you in touch with, your, with the body. Uh, follow the breath with your attention as it moves in and out of your body. Breathe into the body and feel your abdomen expanding and contracting slightly with each inhalation and exhalation. If you find it easy to visualize, close your eyes and see yourself surrounded by light and, or immersed in the... Um, in a luminous substance, a sea of consciousness. Then breathe in that light. Feel the luminous substance filling up your body and making it luminous also. Then gradually focus more on the feeling. You are now in your body. Don't get attached to any visual image. Nice. Creative use of the mind. If you need to use your mind for this simple purpose, Use it in conjunction with your inner body. Only if you're able to be conscious without thought can you use your mind create conscious without thought can you use your mind creatively and the easiest way to enter that state is through your body. Uh, whenever an answer, a solution or a creative idea is needed, stop thinking for a moment by focusing entirely atten uh, focusing attention on your inner energy field. Become aware of the stillness. When you resume thinking, it will be fresh and creative. In any, thoughts, in, in any thought activity, make it a habit to go back and forth every few minutes or so between thinking and an inner kind of experience, an inner kind of listening, an inner stillness. We could say, don't just think with your head. Think with your whole body. Think with your whole body. The art of listening. When listening to another person, don't just listen to your mind. Listen with your whole body. Don't just listen with your mind. Listen with your whole body. Feel the energy field. Feel the energy field. Feel the energy field of your inner body as you listen. That takes attention away from thinking and creates a still space enables you to truly listen within the, without the mind interfering. You're giving the other person space, space to be. It is the most precious gift you can give. Most people don't know how to listen because the major part of their attention is taken up by thinking. Hmm, I know. It's been a lifelong practice for me to 
you know, not be thinking about what I'm going to say when that person shuts up. <laughs> I have had a struggle with that. I'm much better at just listening, being present, much better. Now, most people don't know how to listen and because of because the major part of their attention is taken up by thinking. They pay more attention to that than to what the person is saying and none at all to what really matters, um, which is, to what really matters, the being of the other person underneath the words in the mind. Of course, you cannot feel yourself. You, of course, cannot feel someone else's being except through your own. This is the beginning, the realization that oneness which is love the deepest level of being you are one with all that is uh, most human relationships consist mainly of minds interacting with each other not of human beings communicating being in, in communion no relationship can thrive in uh, that way and that is why there is so much conflict in relationships when the mind is running your life when the mind is running your life. Conflict, strife, and problems are inevitable. Being. Hey, Kim. Thanks for dropping in. <laughs> I love. I'm just wrapping up. I'm just getting, coming to the end of this uh, uh, chapter six, like literally the last paragraph. <laughs> but you're here. You can go back and listen. Um, when the mind is running your life, conflict, strife, and problems are inevitable. Being in touch with your inner body creates a clear space of no mind within which the relationship can flower. Nice. So, hopefully tomorrow, I'm going to start on chapter 7, page 129. Uh, Portals into the Unmanifested. What a great book this is. Wow, I'm in love with this book. And we're about halfway through. Yes, we are. And uh, just about 100 pages left. So um, my friend, uh, James Sadhu Prim, is, uh, <laughs> Sadhu is, uh, you're welcome, Jair. Hang on a second. Don't go away. I'm going to, we're going to take this, this in there and just see how he's doing. Just going to, um, it's going to take a, about a 30 second break in case uh, we want to cut this uh, next part off for the uh, um, for the uh, <laughs> we're doing podcasts so I might so just one second we're just going to take a break I'm going to say thank you and uh, uh, as if we're finished but I'm not going to finish okay so thanks you guys and check us out on YouTube and, and we'll soon have a podcast channel up or maybe it is up and you're listening to it now on podcast and, and also uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram Thanks a lot. Cheers. Love you. Bye. Now I'm back. Okay, we're going to go have a look. Let's see what uh, our man is, is singing in the next room. Shall we go? Oh. Sure, let's go. We are going to see... Hey, yeah. we're coming. We're live. We're live. <laughs> we are. There's, there's my, my buddy James. Hey, there he is. Hey, <laughs> we could hear you back here. We could. Yes. Well, I was, I was out of tune. <laughs> I was, I was you, out of tune a few notches. We could not tell that you were out of tune. <laughs> You're <not>. so kind. <laughs> <laughs> we were, we we're not at all. So, Wait. you guys, James is playing tonight, and uh, drop in and see us. In a few hours, I know Kim. There, Kim saying hi, James. She's, hey, Kim. She's in uh, Kim's in in London, and there's oh, Jr. Jr. Satnam. Yes. Satnam. Jr. Jr. Are you coming tonight, Jr.? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You take. There's a little lag. Yeah. Should yeah. we do, should we do a chant for them right now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Do you have any requests? Well, um, on there or for you? Do you have a request? No. Do you guys have any uh, any chant requests? Hmm. No. I mean, I'm a Omari Padme Hum. Yeah, we'll save that one. Yeah, chant guy. But uh, uh, do you know any other chants? 
I know which one. I know this one. Um, yeah. Here we go, you guys. <laughs> we'll do a little sound check too. So, fair, actually, fair do you know what, you that. guys? I'm gonna. Uh, uh, close this down and then gonna start us up again with a quick uh, uh, live one that we can reproduce so we'll be back on live in about three minutes okay love you guys and uh, we'll be back